Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from this month's sponsor, Ethico. In the delicate arena of compliance, every conversation matters. Traditional methods can leave callers feeling unheard, but Ethico changes the game. Our empathetic interview technique reshapes compliance calls into powerful, compassionate interactions, ensuring no crucial detail is missed. It's about creating a conversation that matters, that resonates, that makes a difference. Be the change in your compliance approach. See the transformation for yourself at ethico.com slash CPN. Book a demo, try our free ROI calculator, and explore the white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance. The Daily Compliance News for May 6, 2024. The ISS says vote no addition. We begin with that story from the Financial Times. That ISS, the Institutional Shareholder Services, uh, advised shareholders to vote against the current CEO's 45% increase on pay. Now, For everyone in the real world, this may seem like a very logical and indeed appropriate response to the cultural toxicity and miasma and everything else that Boeing has gone through. Yet, Boeing's board suggested that he deserved this pay. Uh, The board's rationale was not for a particularly compelling reason, but that it was time for him to get a pay raise. Well, uh, ISS said no, that, uh, you know, if you destroy the reputation of your firm or you're at the helm of that, when it happens, maybe you shouldn't get a pay raise. I have to agree with ISS on that one. Next up from the Wall Street Journal, a U.S. House member, Henry Cuellar, from the great state of Texas, was charged alongside his wife with allegations that he took nearly $600,000 in foreign bribes. Um, the uh, bribes allegedly came from an Azerbaijani-controlled energy company and a Mexican bank in exchange for boosting their interests on Capitol Hill. Uh, now, the U.S. Supreme Court would say, well, that's not bribery. That's just lobbying. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes forward. Next up, from the New York Times, it reports that an accounting firm, firm that audits the financial statements of former President Donald Trump's social media company can no longer do so. The SEC charged the firm, B.F. Borgers, with fraud, saying it had failed to comply with accounting rules. In settling with the SEC, a firm, the firm agreed to immediately stop filing audits on behalf of clients. The regulator held the firm and its owner responsible for deliberate and systemic failures to comply with accounting rules. The accompanying settlement required the firm and Borgers to pay a total civil penalties of $14 million. And our final story is that there is a crisis in Gaza because the government there is so corrupt. And in addition to all the other problems with the Israeli invasion, uh, the corruptness of the Gazan government is preventing government. They are not what is called managerial cities. And managerial cities uh, can have multiple times or multiple companies or industries or verticals located in them. And then many can work remotely, thereby increasing productivity. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, this month's sponsor for the entire Compliance Podcast Network is Ethico. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website and Get the white paper. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.